Well, I'm uh, uh, Herman Peren. I'm from Holland. As you uh, can see, normally we don't walk on those shoes, but uh, just for now, uh, farmers do still walk on them in, in Holland. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, in, into uh, software for a very long time. Uh, uh, I started uh, coding about uh, 34 years ago, uh, but uh, only in Joomla, uh, two and a half years now, and uh, uh, PHP a little bit longer, but also not so very long before I did more .NET, and I wrote a small, uh, yeah, hi Microsoft, and uh, I uh, wrote a small CMS myself, in, first in .NET and later in PHP. Um, I work in a small company with my partner, Nelika, who's more designer and illustrator. Maybe you know us from the Joomla community magazine, uh, the, the drawings and the... Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I just only told who I am and that I'm from Holland. And it's not easy to step on my toes. No, you're, I didn't expect uh, you to come in time. <laughs> no. Okay, I'm uh, going to talk uh, about, uh, I want to talk about uh, architecture. And it has the ambitious title, Joomla 2.0 architecture. Just like, uh, I, I, I'm not going to say, this is what we're going to do now. That's, that is, uh, uh, it's more, the title is more ambitious than, than I am. Uh, when I talk about uh, uh, software architecture, I talk about the, the structure of the whole. So it's not about features that are in it, it's about how it's built, how it's put together, the whole structure. And that might be different from how it looks. So for instance, if you have a, a Volkswagen Beetle, do you have that thing? Oh. If you have a Volkswagen Beetle, but you would put a Formula One uh, motor in it, <laughs> uh, uh, when, when you put the formula, it still looks like a Volkswagen Beetle, but it's a different kind of thing. So you can, uh, the, the architecture is more from what's under the hood. Um, if you start building a, a, a program, computer program, it's just like uh, building a, a house. So if you would build a small house and you think, okay, I need a kitchen too, you could build a kitchen beside it. And you think, oh, I need a bathroom, you build a bathroom also. And you think, uh, get some people over, build an extra room to it. And maybe, hey, I could build a whole stock on top of it, maybe another stock on top of it. So when you start small and you need more things, more features, you could build more, 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 more and extend what you already have. And uh, Sometimes, if you build more and more and more, you get a, a whole structure of all kinds of things. By the way, all the, the uh, pictures I use, my, this is Hundertwasser, it's uh, all, all kind of artists, their names are always under it, and you can download the whole uh, slideshow from the internet to look at the pictures and uh, at, at the artists. But if you, if you uh, build more and more and more and more, you don't always get a good structure of the whole. So um, that's also especially how open source software works. You have uh, a lot of, uh, of things that are available. You think, oh, I can use that. I only want this, want to add that to it and that to it, and someone else adds that to it. So you get all kinds of things that are built on top of each other. And maybe and sometimes it's, uh, it would be better to, if you have a, a small piece of, of that, uh, uh, what is built and what was already built, if you would put it away and build a whole new thing of, of that, that part. Because sometimes adding something to something that consists of all kinds of other solutions might be more work than starting anew. So sometimes the past becomes a burden. It is like a, like a, a, a cannonball. You, you uh, drag behind you all the time 
when you try to come forward. An example is, uh, for instance, with uh, Joomla, uh, we had in Joomla some access control, always, uh, if you want to have uh, edit access for some things, you had to have access to the back end. You could log in in the back end. We had a, a different folder for it, the administrator folder, and logging into that folder gave you access to editing all kinds of things. And we had a, a, a view access, a read access, for some uh, menu items or for some uh, articles by saying uh, this is, may only be seen by registers, registered users or something like that. Uh, so we had all kinds of structures already for access control. Then 1.6 uh, came to build some extra uh, possibilities for access control, but it left the old structures like the uh, the, the administrator folder that was originally for edit access control left it where it was. It just built the extra things to it. Well, the administrator folder is also a bit, uh, it gives a lot of duplicate code. You see it now when you want to have, for instance, uh, you, you want to edit something in the front end and in the back end, you have to write a front end uh, component and a back end component. And the code in those two is almost the same. And that's also why you see it in uh, uh, Nuku, for instance. When you see a, a Nuku application like uh, a Ninja Board, the first uh, entry file says uh, map the, 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 this model in the front end to that model in the back end. Map, 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 map. So you get all kinds of mappings. So you can reuse the, folder, the, the models from the back end in the front end also. You don't have to copy uh, the, the same code all the, all the time. But it is a bit uh, plastering something that is, in fact, not completely right. Because the division between the front end and back end, a separate administrator folder, was only necessary to limit access control, edit access control, for certain things. Um, now this is just one example. You could give uh, a lot of examples with, uh, with Joomla code, where some things ha have uh, evolved by extending, extending, making it, making it bigger, building new things to it. And um, that it might be better sometimes to th throw away, or no, not throw away, maybe start from scratch again to rebuild some things with a new good structure, a good architecture. So maybe uh, that's also why we have minor releases, 1.5, 1.6, 1.5. 99, 1.206, etc. But it's always 1.x. But you could sometimes maybe uh, make a, uh, a Joomla 2.x, uh, uh, Joomla 3.x. Those are uh, the major releases, and major release is especially to uh, rebuild uh, something and that you don't have to look at it is, the, is this backward compatible? But you look at what is the state of the art at this moment to build something, and how can we, how can we do that? Um, by the way, about this time, it would be uh, uh, that, that uh, it was planned that the framework would be apart. Now, the framework uh, gets a new number, it gets the number 11.1 from 2011, the first edition, and uh, the second edition will be 11.2, and then next year the first edition is 12.1, etc. And I was wondering a bit with this, because in that versioning you don't have a major version number. So uh, probably 
they think that all the small steps just going further um, is only the only thing that is necessary. We only have to extend what is already there. Uh, so I think a bit the, this kind of versioning makes the framework a bit more uh, not a development or a, a renewal uh, surrounding for the framework, but more a museum or a grave. But fortunately, we have a lady looking for fresh flowers on the grave. So, uh, well, the sky is the limit for to build new things, or maybe we could even go further. For if we, if we just look, for if we, if we want to see from, if we build a new, uh, new Joomla now, how would we do that? There are so much possibilities. And um, yeah, I want, uh, I'm not going to say now, so, okay, we, we, we have to do it like this and like this. That's not possible. And architecture is a, is a, uh, a profession. So uh, we, we can't do now in the next 30 minutes, uh, can't say, from, uh, okay, that's how it works. But I will give some ideas and uh, uh, I'll lead you to, through some things I found and also some new things I found, um, or maybe not even so new, but that's for later. First thing, if you talk about architecture, uh, w w uh, web design or art architecture, or software architecture, there is a, uh, a book that is the, the main, the most important things about uh, patterns that are recurring uh, for software architecture is Martin Fowler's Patterns of Enterprise Application Architecture. Those are design patterns, but not the design pa patterns I talked about last year. That's more the smaller pieces of code. This is more architectural patterns. So structures of the whole that are uh, all, the, all the time recurring, they, you can find them in uh, uh, the, the book of Fowler. And I, I, you, you are all developers, or you've all read that book, or no? I've got a tip. You, you really must read that book uh, if you want to see it. Oh, here's my. I've not no Apple, but I've got another app that's also working. I wanna, uh, oh, ships. What's this? Oh. There we are. If you want to uh, uh, look in the, those books, I've got them here. Uh, but the nice thing of uh, uh, the, the Fowler book is that it's 500 pages. Oh my god, I have to read 500 pages also. No, you don't have to. You can start with the first 100 pages. They are narrative. They read like a novel. So you can, if you read those 100 pages, you know what everybody is talking about when it's about software architecture. So that's a good start. And you can read it on the toilet. Don't do, do it too often. Otherwise, maybe you associate the smile with uh, the code. And that's not, uh, that's the thing you have to look out for. OK, the, the, so it's only 100 pages. Why do I uh, take the, the other book? I also had it, the book of Athens. Well, you also see it's all very incestuous because the foreword is by Martin Fowler. Uh, but you can see that book as a book how to understand something about the software architecture patterns that Fowler is talking about. So you. Uh, in, in the book of uh, Evans, he is uh, referring very often to the book of Fowler. So, if you have read the nar narrative, take the book of uh, uh, Evans, uh, read about uh, uh, that, and then you can look up all the things he is referring to in Fowler, and you have an efficient way to know something about software architecture. Domain-driven desi design is also such a, a thing it, that's more about 
uh, how to say it, short. Uh, software is always, um, especially enterprise software, is always a model of reality. And uh, domain-driven design says, please keep the, the model, your objects, as close to the uh, as close to reality, the objects in reality, as possible. Then you can talk with the people who work in the reality, the domain experts, the people who know about the subject. Um, well, all those terms like uh, uh, domain-driven design and object-oriented programming and object-relational mapping, etc., all those terms uh, are also um, that they that they're very important ideas, but they also have some religious aspects and marketing aspects. So what you what happens also is when you say, if I'm, I'm doing a, a RESTful framework, and people say, wow, oh, it's really a RESTful. That is, so apart from, or, or the, 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 maybe even that .NET went to MVC was also partly because of the, it was a good, not only because MVC is good, but also because it's a good marketing thing. Also, partly, just partly. And so you get sometimes even get some religious uh, aspects uh, to, um, to all those, those terms. So, and that can prevent you from free thinking. So later in, the, uh, in this, I'll tell you some things, some people who say, is MVC, MVC the best thing there is? For some people, it is cursing. To say, to even say, to even think something like that. So, but I say, look out for the religious aspects of all those and the marketing aspects of all those things. Those are great ideas, but use the ideas, but still keep on f think freely. Especially if we would make, would manage to make a new major uh, version, then it would be uh, great if uh, uh, if we would be free. In, in mind and to make everything we we want to. Uh, I want to go back to f to two very basic principles. One is objects, and the other one is layers. Uh, for the objects, I want to go back for a moment. It comes back later. Why I tell this? Uh, I want to go back to the origin of object-oriented programming. Back in the 60s, Simula, Simula 1, Simula 67, the, those were the first object-oriented programs. They were made to solve very difficult, uh, complex uh, uh, problems to, to, to make a complex uh, model more understandable, more uh, hand, to handle it better. So uh, Simula, uh, was trying to understand how waiting queues, for instance, work. Uh, how does a traffic queue uh, come into being? Uh, if the, 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 the original way to, um, to tackle a problem like that is to gather all kinds of data, you have all kinds of data, you put all the data in a database, nice tables, then you write some software that operates on all that data, and you get your conclusion from it. But because it was so complicated, they said, well, maybe we should uh, make objects. So if you have a traffic queue, how does, it on, how does it come into being? You have, in reality, all those objects, cars. So let's make objects, cars, and give them a state, for instance, uh, where they are, velocity, uh, what direction they go, and a uh, uh, behavior, the methods you put on it. Uh, because also those methods and those data, they belong together. No division between the data and the, uh, uh, the the, 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 the procedures. That was old school th thinking. That was called procedural thinking. 
you made procedures upon uh, the data. In fact, the, the word CMS is also coming forth from that old thinking, because it is a content management system. So content, that's data. And what do you do with the data? You do something with it, you manage it system. So uh, th that is very deep in our uh, way of developing that we always think in um, uh, you have the data, you, you do something with it, and you have your application. Uh, that's also mostly how you start doing a, a Joomla application or another application. You, you get your data, you make your database tables, uh, normalize the tables, then make some software that operates on those data and ready. But the original idea about objects was not to do that, to make objects, where the data are part of the objects. We come to that uh, later. Another important thing I want to talk about and it's also in that Fowler book, very important, are three layers that you uh, can see or should see in all uh, software that makes it more handle, uh, better to handle the software. And the three layers, data, domain layer, presentation layer. And in object-oriented uh, programming and domain-driven uh, design, etc., the domain layer is the most important layer. Uh, in the old school, so we had devising the data, making procedures, and then presenting those uh, things. In the, in the object-oriented programming, you make objects in the domain layer, you have a data layer to persist that, to save all the data, and you have a presentation layer. That's a bit different. And, uh, of course, if you make a pre uh, uh, an application like that, you, uh, you have a, a lot of times that you do the same things over and over again in different applications, and that's why you have a framework. In framework, you have for those three layers also all kinds of things that are recurring in every application. The difficult thing with object uh, uh, oriented with real object oriented programming if you make objects in your domain layer is that you want to persist them you want to save them too so you uh, normally you use for instance a uh, relational database because that is a uh, state of the art is already used uh, for 30 years you could use object databases which are all very new and distributed databases like CouchDB is all very new but with relational databases you know what you have but it was from the old school thinking about the data and devising the data and when you start devising your objects and then uh, saving them you have to have something else that's called object relational mapping. For object, object relational mapping in PHP, we have a very nice framework, it's called Doctrine. Uh, you, uh, it's a, a, an open source framework uh, with uh, good developers uh, contributing to it. I saw uh, two days ago there was a pull request, it's on Git, uh, from Matthias Ferraz. Uh, so well known uh, to some people, and uh, uh, he's, uh, he had some contributions to that too. It, the new Zen 2 framework, this is an exciting year, eh? Zen 2 is coming with a major uh, version of Zen, is coming with, uh, F Symphony is coming with a m major version now. Uh, there's a new version of Kohana, a new version of Lithium, the, the, the successor of uh, Cake. So all MVC frameworks, in PHP, and that they come with newer versions. And they all use Doctrine. Doctrine, uh, uh, you can use that very, very well. In the next, uh, that just uh, came out, the last uh, Joomla Community Magazine, there was an article about using Doctrine within Joomla. 
by a, a, a Dutch guy, a student still. Uh, Doctrine has a database abstraction layer, so you don't have to worry about to which database, if you want to save to a, a SQL Server or you want to save to Oracle or to MySQL, doesn't matter. That's the uh, work of the database abstraction layer. It has an ORM, so object relational uh, uh, mapping layer. And also a nice thing what it has, it has DQL, a doctrine query language, that is a, a just exactly like SQL, but you can use it to query objects. So in the, in the domain layer, you have your objects, and you, maybe you also want to say, uh, select and join and uh, etc. You can do that with DQL. It's very interesting. Uh, by the way, if you, uh, in, in .NET, you had, uh, that, that was uh, uh, based on, uh, 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 how, how do you say, um, in .NET you have uh, uh, data sets, Data sets are kind of uh, pieces of the database in your memory. You could use something like uh, uh, SQL also to that uh, data set by using link, it's called. That's also SQL, but you can use it just in C-sharp or another .NET language. And you have something like that too in PHP, and that could be interesting if, for instance, you're working with rows and row sets, like Nuku does, uh, and this is called PHP Link. It's uh, completely uh, uh, free, it's on CodePlex, that's the kind of source forge, but then from Microsoft. Uh, you, it's, uh, you can download it, you can uh, play with it, and uh, so you can use SQL uh, uh, com commands, uh, SQL uh, sentences in your PHP to connect and select from row sets, for instance. It's interesting. It, it is uh, more based on uh, when you have record sets like you have in .NET. I, uh, yeah. This is one of the things I thought, hey, th this is interesting, I didn't know that. But I now think it's better to go to Doctrine at once, then you, have, then you really query the, the objects. This is a kind of in-between solution, but interesting. Okay, now I talked about the layers, but how does the holy trinity of MVC fits into that? Well, that's a, a, a story. Um, you know, the, the MVC was uh, invented by uh, Trick Verinsko, also, again, someone from Norway, uh, always uh, clever people from Norway, I think, because they keep it cool up there. Uh, I, I don't know. And he, it was already in uh, 78, 79 that at Xerox Lab he invented MVC, but originally MVC was in the presentation layer. In that, those days, the main layer was called the business layer still, business logic layer, something. But MVC is originally something totally in the presentation layer. And if you look now in Joomla, etc., how and, and all the MVC frameworks, how we use MVC now, you see that it, it's even hard to see where the layers are. Okay, the, the, the view is about the same as the presentation layer at the moment. The, domain, the, the model is yeah, somewhere the, the domain layer and half the data layer, and you have some procedural things that are called the controller, well, because it's not a, what kind of a strange object is it anyway. So there was some critique on MVC, and that is already some time ago, you know, the two books I recommended were already from 2003. So that's two years before Joomla came into be being. This idea is also not new. Naked Objects is an idea, uh, is worked out by Richard Paulson in his thesis. You can download it 
allnakedobject.net, etc. Uh, uh, .pdf, it has a foreword by Jake Verinsko, the, the, uh, the original, f uh, uh, how would you say it, the founder, no, the, f the one who invented, inventor of uh, MVC. And that's, that's added later when, when they uh, made the electronic edition, because originally uh, when he did this investigation to naked objects, it was seen as a critique on, mainly seen as a critique on MVC. And what he shows also in his thesis is that MVC leads to procedural thinking. And so, and he gives some examples how you could, uh, no, he gives some examples of what he investigates are some applications that are built in several ways with MVC and without MVC and so you get a good uh, 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 comparison. Um, what he, uh, wh where he pleads for, uh, the Mr. Paulson, uh, is to go back to the behavioral, behaviorally complete objects. So the original idea of where objects were made for. And that also fits very well into the domain-driven design thinking to make objects that are a bit related to objects in reality that, that match better and that are, uh, have methods that, says some, that say something to the people who work normally with those, uh, with those objects in reality. Very interesting, and in onnakedobject.net you have two frameworks, one in Java and the other in .NET. I said, oh shit, we are doing PHP. Well, there is another genius, this one, not from Norway, but from Italy, Giorgio Cironi, maybe you know him, mean, within two weeks he comes, it's a young man, he's not doing Joomla, he's doing a symphony, he's now mostly into test-driven design, another religion, and uh, uh, within two weeks he will be in Amsterdam in the Dutch PHP days to give a presentation about test-driven design. And uh, I first uh, met, met him on the internet, never met him in person, by a tweet I saw uh, from, from Matthias, it was, uh, saying, uh, hey, this guy uh, says that uh, you should not use, or you should, no, you sh you, that, that you should not use singletons. A singleton is a kind of global variable. And if you use a singleton, you want to use a global variable. Uh, that, that's another, f from the other design patterns, singleton. And if you want to use globals, then something must be wrong in the, uh, the way you devised your uh, your, your objects. So uh, he put some questions to it. But he made, all by himself, by the way his, uh, his nickname is always uh, uh, Piccolo Principe Azzurro, and that's also why the avatar is, uh, is there, that's his avatar, the, the, the little blue prince. And um, he made a naked object framework in PHP uh, in 2009 and 2010. It's all GPL, you can download it, you can look at it. And I think, yeah, this is also a very, very interesting thing. Uh, he uses this together with Doctrine. So if you download that uh, naked, uh, naked page PHP, you have Doctrine with it. So the, the thing about uh, saving the things to the database, you don't have to worry about, that's Doctrine. The naked objects, you can just play with the objects. And one of the things that naked objects is trying to do is to uh, get the present, presentation layer automatic as much as possible from the domain layer. So you can concentrate on the domain layer. Um, I think that's a very interesting development. Development, well, it was already from 2004, his thesis about uh, naked objects. So it was some time ago already. Myself, I did uh, some uh, uh, experiments. Uh, I think we're a bit running out of time. But more abstract 
experience. Uh, we, we can talk about that later, but that's, that, those are not very practical. Uh, my, uh, my experience are more in the, in the form of, uh, okay, REST says we can have a uniform interface. Now, now I'm going to talk a bit in jargon maybe, but just quickly. REST says you can have a uniform interface, you can make a, uh, a whole system only consisting of uh, objects having a, a public methods that are part of a uniform interface. So let's try how far I can rework uh, th parts of the Joomla uh, system to uh, objects that only have a brand interface for all objects, not only controllers, but for all objects. And that's possible. So then and I, I take JView and I think, okay, uh, if I want to have only, uh, for instance, bread or crud uh, uh, methods, then I um, must uh, split that, that component into uh, that object in different objects, and you can all have them a uniform interface. Well, it's a bit uh, theoretical, but that's my, um, that's my fun. But I think all those experiments also lead to more understanding what we can do further. And I would like to share that with some more people too, those, uh, those things, and to experiment in that direction with some more people. Um, and we couldn't use that, all those things, also if we would build a new version of Joomla. What I see before me is that we all keep on going, uh, making uh, a 1.x, 1.27, etc. We all keep on going, making nice distributions, and we all learn from that. But maybe beside that, we could have a look if we could start from scratch. How would we build it up then, with the knowledge we have now? Uh, f from what, what is going on, uh, be, and it's going so fast. And, and the things we can use, like things like Doctrine, and the things we see in Zen 2 and in, in Symphony 2, and, and Lithium and Kohana, etc. It's so, uh, yeah, it, it, it will be exciting. Then we, we could make a better framework, and we would have less time, because now, most of the time, I write. Uh, uh, applications in Joomla. And most of the time I spend a lot of time in uh, rewriting things or making th things, uh, yeah, writing more code than necessary because all those things are, uh, yeah, could, could be better. And Nuku is a great help, of course, but also has some disadvantages. Uh, we talk about that later. Johan, but maybe me. Okay. Um, but it needs also some courage, I think, to say, okay, we start from scratch, because otherwise you know what you have. If you know what you have, you can just do that, and okay, uh, uh, it m might be not ideal, but you, you know what you have. And to start. Uh, a, a new and to make some building that is really crazy and really that you think, okay, but the sky is not even a limit. Yeah, that needs some courage too. What what I would like is uh, uh, well, I, I myself, I'm doing those experiments and and uh, uh, thinking about it, etc. Well, to get to something practical with that would take at least five years. And we are five years f further, and then so much has changed, and we are at least five years further before something practical comes with that. So what I'm looking at is some people who say, let's form a team. I'm open for that, very much. Let's share the knowledge, let's share, uh, let's build a better framework. Uh, not, not only framework, a better, uh, a better Joomla. And that's what I wanted to say.
And then we have time for questions and dis discussion. You. Um, you did start off by just saying what Joomla is. What is Joomla a CIS? Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> Joomla, f what, what it is for me, let, that's for, because there are so many people thinking differently about it and um, uh, uh, I once uh, saw a, a presentation from Johan saying Joomla is not a CMS, so uh, uh, how I see it is um, you have the Joomla framework, most of the things that are in library, and it is the part that is going apart now. Just like you have a Nuku framework, that's a framework, and on top of that framework you can build an application. And I see a CMS as a application. It's a, an application to do something with content. Uh, with uh, the content as the domain. Uh, as, as the subject of the application. So, what, and I think Joomla tries to be a content management system. Uh, Johan's critique on it was uh, uh, then be, that uh, a content management system needs to have uh, various content to manage, and uh, that uh, it needs, to be aware. Yeah, needs to be aware of content. And um, um, the, 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 that's where, where we have content creation kits for. And so it's a bit, the Joomla in itself doesn't have a content creation kit, so it is not a content management system. That was, uh, well, it's just a matter of definition. But how I see it is that it tries to be a content management system that is an application built on top of a framework. Do you see it differently? No, no I, I was just thinking that you know, you're talking about five years, so that's largely because you're, you're talking about the framework being to be... No, 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 no the, the whole... You could actually go for one of these other frameworks. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that is a... Yeah, but maybe for the video I should repeat also the, uh, the question. Uh, for the sound, but uh, he asked whether uh, um, we should go maybe for another framework also and build another a CMS on top of that. that. You're not the first one saying that. In, in Italy, another genius guy who did a lot with Joomla and is now more into Symphony 2 and, uh, uh, and Doctrine, etc., is Alessandro Nadino, also known as Odino, uh, no, Alessandro Nadalin is his name, and Odino is his nickname on Fora, etc. And he said last year something like, uh, uh, "We could rebuild. We, we could have built uh, 1.6 in half a year." Well, he's Italian, so you take two kilos of salt with it. But uh, yeah, you're not Alessandro. Oh, Italian, you're not Alessandro. No, 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 no. I love Italy, I love it. But I, uh, it's, uh, no, let's not talk about Italy. Let's talk about Joomla. But it would be, if, if you investigate all those things and all those frameworks that are being made, like Doctrine, it's all open source, it's all GPL. If you could use all those things and make a CMS with that, why would you bake your own? If you have other ideas, like in Nuku, there are some ideas that are not in the other frameworks, so they bake their own, because they need the chain of command and they need all, all kind of other uh, nice things that are not in the other frameworks. But maybe some other things, like object relational mapping, could have been used by, by Doctrine. Uh, Doctrine is on the. Uh, I saw it also in, on the tracker as a as a ticket. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, there's another question there. For prior question, the for what 
for is who, who or what is Joomla for? Because it seems to me that discussions about Joomla can be aimed at all kinds of audiences. And maybe if there was a clear statement of the primary audience, then that would be very helpful. I happen to be so dreadfully old that I was involved in Simula. Yeah, OK. Great. But at the same time, there was a man around who was also involved in Simula called James Martin. And he wrote a book, which may now be out of print, called Application Development Without Programmers, which is absolutely wonderful for us in the still of procedural bent. <laughs> and we built several of these. They give the end user representative who might be one of a work group. You talked about designing a model and giving it to the domain expert. Yeah. We design the model and let the domain expert manipulate through the front end the model in such a way that it is then usable by the department of people that he represents. Yeah, that's, that's also now in domain driven design, those I ideas are coming back again also. So do, don't uh, build, in the old days, you were a developer, you went to a company, you said, okay, what do you want? Oh, you do transport. Oh yeah, I see, parcels, that and that, uh, you just make a table of parcels, etc. And uh, uh, say, okay, I'll make my application. You go uh, to, to your uh, office, you devise your database tables, normalization, etc. Then you devise a whole system, you devise a GUI, then you go back and then you get the acceptance phase. That's the, the phase, the, the time that you have to uh, take to f put it through their mouth of the people who have to use it. Say, oh, God, this is not what I'm used to and it, what, what the strange ideas are in it and, and it, it didn't work. We are losers also, you know, this whole branch of software development. Three quarters of all our projects are not in time within, uh, or, or are not uh, uh, finished in time, budget, and requirements. So uh, we needed new ways to think about it. So domain driven design, agile development, etc., are not coming from nothing. They're a necessity to uh, to make something of this uh, this this branch, this uh, th this uh, uh, software development. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. The last one uh. I was actually involved in finished in 1981 uh, when I stopped on the grounds that I thought I was too old to be writing code uh, and went and did something else. Uh, but intriguingly, in the last 10 years, the jobs I have done have all been to do with the British government asking, how do we get out of the mess where somebody has created and rammed down the throats? Yeah. Yeah. And wouldn't it be lovely if the Joomla job shop could build a structure which would allow the uh, child support agency in England to build something without spending £55 million. Yeah, but that's also what the idea is and also the idea of splitting the framework and uh, that was the, from the start it was already the idea to split the framework from the, uh, from the CMS application and uh, uh, the framework could be used to build other applications and to, uh, you know, in that also in this, uh, uh, where, uh, this one, you see that a, a, a framework is just to uh, prevent, uh, now to, to uh, look after all the repetitive tasks that have uh, to be written in every application again. And that, that is, uh, but that, that's also what the other frameworks are doing too by the way, all the other MVC frameworks. Yeah. I'll, I'll answer a few points. Oh, answer. May, maybe yeah, if I'll, it... I'll, I'll, no, no, just... Oh, yeah, okay, I'm just okay. for the no, no, video. No, speaking, I'll answer two. First uh, of all, um, which audience? Um, 
that's, then you need to go back to the question, is Joomla something that is a product for a user audience, or is it a solution for a developer audience? Um, that's, okay, okay. So first question is, which audience? Then you need to go back and ask yourself, is Joomla a product for a user audience, and are we building features for users? Or are we building a, a solution, aka framework, a bunch of code that developers use to build products for users? Uh, you go a step lower. Um, if you look at Symfony, if you look at Zend, uh, if you look at Kohana, if you look at any other PHP more framework oriented pr project out there, then they will answer the second. They will say, well, we are building, we're collaborating on software that people can extend to create products. Joomla is much more an end user solution. Joomla is much more a WordPress then it is a Drupal, or it is a Zen framework, or it is a Kohana. First question, first answer that you need to come up with. Uh, second, if you decide as a community to say, well, we're going to go more the framework direction because we see that there's a need for a broader base, for a, for a thicker base that we can all extend upon and that we need to write less code and we can do more advanced things. The second question is you're going to get to need to attract people that can do that. You can talk about it but you're going to need to attract people that can write that code, that understand that code, that understand that architecture, that um, can discuss and work out solutions that work. Um, a very good example of that is a Typo3 community. Typo3 decided a few years ago to build their own framework. They call it Flow3 and it took them five years, four years. It's still not completely done. They're now only starting to use that framework for their next version of Typo, which is Typo5. It's not even in typo 4 yet. Uh, they started it and they basically tossed 10 people out of the community uh, with the task to develop that framework. They said, like, go. You guys are the architects. You guys know what you're doing. Go and develop it. it took them four or five years. It's only now that they're ad adopting that. That's another problem that the Joomla community has. It has a lack of knowledge and experience in those fields. Right? And the last one, if you want to do this, you need to go and learn to work together, right? Uh, we're gonna need to stop developing 25 CCKs and then brag about how ours is different than the other. Uh, that's, that's, the basis. that's the basis of open source, right? If you wanna be an open source product, then you've developed features for users and you set up forums and you answer questions. If you wanna be an open source project, you need to start working together with people to build software where people collaborate on that is a win-win for everybody involved. And then if you can do one, two, and three, then you can start talking architecture. Then you can start talking, and now how are we going to write that code? You're welcome. Um, I also saw on the uh, uh, on, on general, dev general lists or somewhere, uh, last week, someone said, as Snobben, I don't know who it is, uh, he said something like, uh, uh, we have to have more users, we have to put a lot of effort into getting more users than Drupal or WordPress. And I think, <laughs> what are you talking about? No, that's not, that's not interesting, not at all. Were there any more questions? There's a question. Uh, my question is, if we have also the objects, why do we want to use a SQL database and we have to use the object dimensional mapping? Is it, uh, my question is, uh, why if, if you want to focus on objects, yes. Why we want to use a SQL database which is not focused on objects yeah. and then have to do a object relationship uh, management? Is it isn't better to use, I don't know, MongoDB, which yeah. is focused on objects? Yeah. yeah, is it not better to use, for instance, an object database like MongoDB or uh, if maybe even uh, something in between like Postgres, SQL, etc.? Of course, that, that would be good, but that has uh, we, we now have 30 years of experience with uh, SQL databases. There is developed a lot of, uh, of in it. The other things are still very new. They have great possibilities, but they have a lot of performance issues. Those performance issues are solved for SQL databases now in, in 30 years. 
So it will take some years before real object databases are as good in uh, performance, retrieval of data, etc., as the as the uh, the SQL data. But it has a lot of possibilities, and there are even like CouchDB has even new uh, uh, concepts. So, uh, uh, for instance, all, all the time we were raised with uh, avoid redundancy, but that's also because we were from the time that uh, memory was costly. And uh, now, uh, CouchDB, what you see is that redundancy is a good thing, because you could use that to distribute uh, your database on many places and let the database uh, uh, synchronize themselves, the, the different uh, uh, parts of the database synchronize themselves. Let we not do it, let CouchDB do it. So there are different uh, uh, new things coming up, but they're still new. And with uh, SQL databases, we, we don't have to look for it. We can do it, write that with our uh, eyes closed. With, but it's a boss problem. Also, if you develop for the latest and the greatest, there are always going to be less people to help you and fix an update. Like that. Um, if you are a very big community, then you already have a lot of problems. Uh, as you have, if you have a lot of problems, there's a lot of hard work about MSC, and a lot of components say that we're MSC, if you really look at that, and you very much argue that they're not. Um, so, if you go, and a lot of people ask that, like why is Google, for example, is not doing uh, a CouchDB or something like that. If you then look at, for example, at a Doctrine, Doctrine doesn't have official CouchDB uh, support no. yet. There's a little bit of work being done in that direction. Um, so it's a knowledge thing, right? There's no, but also because Doctrine is not uh, uh, for storing in uh, uh, an object database. It's an object relational mapping. So it maps the objects to a relational database. Guys, from there's a presentation just on that topic. There's a presentation this afternoon about um, about show, uh, which is something that was a little new, and they have used CouchDB as a storage. Okay. And they actually use the object relationship mapping in Nuku and then move the schema information in Couch, uh, which is a way that they solve it. Uh, it's just very interesting too, if you're interested in that. Uh, but like I said, not much information and much knowledge there yet, so stick with the standard. Yeah. Uh, I, I had it also with a. I had an application uh, where I thought uh, uh, it would be faster if I use some new things. But well, the application, the, the client wanted to have the application be finished within a week, and I thought, yeah, well, let's do it the old way. Then I know what I have. It takes me maybe even more time than when I have managed to. Uh, t to uh, figure out how to use the, the, the newest thing, but let's stick to what I have. Another, oh. topic. Another one. If you have somebody that says, hey, I want to do a CouchDB performance wise for my database and I want to use Joomla for that, right? What's then the problem? No, I didn't get the question. Well, if somebody comes to you, and I had that, a guy came to me and said, we need CouchDB support for Joomla. Is it going to be in It's not possible. You have to write it uh, because the framework is supposed to have, for example, you have JTable, which is supposed to have a relationship. But yeah, but and any of that doesn't matter. His problem is not his performance on the database side. His, his problem is his performance on the, on the, on the PHP side, if, he, if he's going to use Joomla. Uh, his bottleneck will be Joomla and not the database. So you need CouchDB, well then don't go with the Joomla. Oh. Yeah. So uh, you see that it's like most knowing where what fits because right. there's a buzzword that it's called database storage as a yeah. storage. Yeah. And maybe he should look better look somewhere in a Ruby uh, uh, environment and uh, find more people who are familiar with Couch, for instance. The couch is built as a high performance solution for data storage. Uh, if you need a high performance solution to store your data, you also need a high performance solution to render it. Uh, PHP, uh, in the normal way that's used to it, I would doubt that that's going to solve your problem because you're going to get a, a front end bottleneck. Are there any more questions? On the, uh, maybe some short, very short, because we're now uh, the time is. Uh, Two more questions and then we close it up. Yeah? Okay, 
Okay, so you're just wondering, uh, you painted the vision of Euclid 2.0, showed us lots of high-tech stuff, and you are asking us, like, there, who wants to help? So what's your practical vision about this? I guess you have thought about how could it be realized? How do we get something out of this talk that would become reality at some point in the future? Yeah. Uh, how would, what's, your, what's your ideas, practical ideas, about how we can get this started? Let's say, okay, I want to help you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're thinking, like, let's build everything from scratch. We have two parts, the framework, the application. Uh, we're thinking, like, start from scratch with everything, or maybe look at stuff that exists. Yeah, all, all those things. Uh, what I had in mind was to get a group together who want to learn together. So, uh, who want to... I think there, there is a lot of stuff already there, and we must not reinvent the wheel. So if you, and maybe some other people, I hope we get this weekend four, maybe five people together who say, let's try it. Let's try to make a learning environment and divide also who is going to study what in specific and uh, share that knowledge with the other people and come uh, make a roadmap for that to come to uh, a choice of a framework and a application. And uh, my, uh, my ideal would be if, but that's also, would everybody have enough time? Would we have enough people? My idea would be if we could make a, a kind of, uh, of, of idea of what, what we're going to within a year. And what I would like is to make that as concrete as possible. So uh, the mo best would be if next year at uh, Jane Beyond we would have a Joomla 2.0 presentation, <laughs> a prototype presentation, maybe with several possibilities, but yeah, maybe it's too high, I don't know, but there are so many possibilities also for sharing knowledge and learning together, and I think if we make a good plan, we can come quite far, and uh, if we don't try, well, we just wait till 1.26 comes out, and then, and 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 Molagio uh, uh, 74, or I don't know what the versioning is there, and yeah, and we we go on, but that that's also good, and then we drink a beer together. Was there a last question? Yeah, yeah, it is on the website at this moment. Uh, www.hermanperen p e e r e n dot n l slash and then the name of this presentation Joomla 2.0 architecture dot pdf Wow, thanks. Can you tweet that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Tweet. And yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do it. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, my uh, tweet name is Herman Peren. So... Yeah, it, it will be. It will be put on uh, on on SlideShare. It will be. But I I had put it only now there because uh, if my computer would crash and the 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 thing uh, how do you call it the, the thump I uh, lo I lose that and uh, then I still would have an, something on internet. That's why I put it there. But it will be uh, uh, available and I've uh, on SlideShare also Herman Pere and I put it up there as soon as possible. Yeah. You know, there's a number of us who are looking at kind of innovating uh, Joomla and the, the work that Nuku's done, what we're doing in Malaysia, what you're proposing, and other people have done a lot of work too with the framework. And I think, you know, trying to bring together all of those separate efforts is yeah. really a good idea, yeah. a vision for the future. And I don't know how we exactly go about doing that, but you know, I, 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 I think that happened. Uh -huh. so, uh, there, there is an, uh, like, in the, on Sunday or tomorrow, there is an uh, unconference. Unconference, yeah. yeah there, there's a, there's yeah. a group of uh, okay. people to Chunga. Well, there's a, there's a group on, on, on people.jumla. Yeah, I made a group on people.jumla about this uh, subject too. But uh, I'm, I'm still the only, uh, I think, uh, the only who. No. Nobody knows yet. I'm the 
Oh, you, you're there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, like every idea, I try to use it in our component, in the universe. Uh, but I've noticed that the reality and the theory is usually far apart. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I would propose, instead of doing everything again once in five, like in five years, like we did it for uh, six, uh, let's do one part in a time. So we, we'll start from something, release it, and go on. Uh, because of that is how it's working now. Uh, yeah, but your talk was uh, more like uh, we will make something we hope to be, uh, hope to have it in five years. No, no, no. Uh, I, I, I know what you mean, but uh, uh, I would like to work with you. I have, uh, I have used the same ideas, I have used the same stuff. Uh, but I would like to have gradual change. Uh, I think you can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, replace one piece at a time and try to make it work so that community, if, if we uh, come into a situation where, where we have a plane to or new framework, uh, it's hard to start using new framework. I don't, I don't think so. You see it with Nuku too. There's a whole new framework and you just plug it in and you use the new framework. Huh? It's well, but, okay, to the answer there is, this is technology, guys. Uh, if you don't keep up, you will be outcompeted by the technology. Yeah, right? that's... Right. Like, if you sit around and wait for, for doing nothing, then it's CSS2, you know, and not HTML4. Today it's CSS3. Yeah, but so tomorrow it, it, it won't be websites, it will be web applications. So you're a community, you need to work together to evolve faster than technology goes because you're actually helping to create it. Just sitting around and waiting until technology is there and then waiting three, four more years until like as it establishes itself, it's not gonna get you there. Then you can go into proprietary software and then just sell products. Then, then, then but, uh, source doesn't offer any advantages to you. But we'll talk about it uh, later. we talk about it uh, uh, further. And I think we have to finish this. And thank you very much also for the discussion. <laughs>